thank you all again for coming and taking the time to celebrate my dad's uh, my life, life and I'll try to keep it together the best I can. Um, I'm going to give a couple talks uh, on my own. Um, my uh, dad's dear friend, Uncle Leo, and Irene's talk. And then I'd like to invite anybody else who'd like to say a few words and to feel free to come up and say a few words. So I'll kind of start out um, with my, uh, my speech and my You know, if I look back and reflect over the last, you know, especially the last few weeks, uh, when you're up here, my dad uh, passed, it kind of amazes me how much uh, my dad impacted my life. And, and the way he did it was very special in a way that I didn't even realize he was doing it. And so the way he was guiding me and uh, making sure I went down my dad. So um, I like to think of my dad, the characteristics he imparted upon me, uh, first of all, some people call it nurturing. I call my dad's kind of um, overseeing my life as guidance and involvement. Whether he was refereeing my soccer games as a as a youth, or you know when I was in college, he always tried to keep tabs on me. He always drive up every Sunday. Um, we'd go ski shooting, and he'd always take me to lunch. And even if I had a rough night the night before, going out with friends, I'd always look forward to my dad picking me up uh, early Sunday mornings. We spent the day together, and it was great. Uh, we had a great time, and it was kind of his way, I think, in a way, to kind of guide and make sure I was on the right track. Um, when we were young, Elaine, um, my sister, uh, my dad would take us both out skiing on the weekends, um, you know, making sure that we had what we needed to do and have, a, have fun. He would drop us off in the ski areas, and then he would go cross country skiing or snowshoeing as we saw some of the pictures there. Um, but always making sure we had what we needed and we were able to enjoy um, our childhood. And it was, it was amazing that he did that. As I look back, I never really thought about that and what he was doing throughout the course of our lives. Um, so another characteristic I'd like to talk about my dad is he was calm, he was very even keeled, and he was very passionate. Um, when I was younger and a little more wild, was, I did a lot of fighting and bare knuckle type of competitions and I would get hurt. My dad was there. But he would never panic. He never show any uh, over concern or, or worry about it. He just did things with me okay. I mean, he was always there as kind of a level headed, evil, even killed person, uh, even when things, situations went a little haywire. And as a lot of you know, he was an engineer. He was always able to analyze the situation and solve the problem. Um, he was successful by doing a lot of hard work and a lot of knowledge. He was always prepared. And he didn't know my dad very well, would know that if he got a, a, a new toy or a camera or a fishing rod or a reel, whatever it may be, he would read that manual over and over again to do everything about that piece of equipment forward and backwards. And that knowledge he kind of imparted upon me and this the way to have a process of him uh, as my wife will tell you. I kind of do that a little bit in a way I didn't realize I started doing that. Um, he always told me once you start something, you have to finish it. Don't leave things undone. Make sure those were completed and make sure you always finish what you start. Um, his drive as a father to make sure that I'm guiding, he got completed guiding me in ways, making sure I did things in life was, was uh, his drive as a father to help me succeed. Uh, another was strength combined with a caring nature. He always provided for our family when we were younger. He would, whether it be going out of the country uh, for a few months doing some work, whether it be, you know, going on his business trips, making sure that, you know, he provided as, as, as a father and, and a husband. Um, and he always did that to make sure we had what we needed. Uh, the thing about my father, a lot of you know, he's very stubborn. Uh, very tough, very ethical. He was always very ethical about everything. He, it, it, something that may have been, may not have been the most profitable thing to, to decision to make, but he was always doing the right thing. He would always make sure that things were done correctly and ethically correct. He would surround himself with good people and avoid ones that were not. I mean, he was smart about that. He could tell people's character by the way um, they acted around him. And he was talking, Uncle Leo, which I'm gonna give a, his talk in a little bit, 
uh, really emphasized that when he was in Hong Kong and New Zealand when he was in his youth. So all these things my dad imparted upon me, our family, um, looking back, reflecting, I never even realized what he was doing, but he was doing it all along. He knew what he was doing. And his love and guidance throughout my life is something I will always be grateful for. And I don't think I could accomplish the things that I have done in my life without his guidance. And even though that guidance was um, sometimes very strong, but very good. Uh, he knew when to tell me um, to do things, but not to do things. And it was uh, amazing how he did that without me even knowing. Thank you. So Uncle Leo is one of my dad's very, very close friends uh, growing up. Unfortunately, he could not make it here today, but he wanted me to give his uh, talk about my dad and their youth. So this is from Uncle Leo. Hello, everyone. My name is Leo Chan Wan Ki. Unfortunately, I'm unable to attend Sue Heen's funeral as I live in Australia, and my personal fitness has restricted traveling by myself. I do, however, appreciate the opportunity to share some fond memories I have of my lifelong friend, Xu Heen. Xu Heen and I attended St. Joseph's College in Hong Kong in the 1950s. When Heen was two years older than me, we crossed paths, often as we were keen swimmers, soccer players, and runners. In 1955, when I was ready to sit for my exams, it became obvious that my focus on mischief and non-academic activities was catching up with me. As part of my fear and desperation, I wrote to my friend Jackie Kung, who had migrated to the United States earlier in the year. Jackie was a good friend, a former classmate of Hune, and he wrote to Hune to ask him to assist me with my studies. To my surprise and delight, shortly after Hune telephoned me, you can imagine my relief when a person of Hune's status, a top scholar, a fellow sportsman, reached out to me, a distracted, misguided teenager. Heen spent so much time assisting me with my studies, staying in after school tutoring me, I'm happy to say I passed my exams. This was the start of a lifelong friendship, and over subsequent years, we spent many a time hiking, swimming, and being teenagers. Heen also kept me on the straight and narrow, continued to support, mentor, and tutor me with my studies. To Heen's credit, my end of year 1956 exams, I even achieved some top 10 results. At the end of 1956, at the age of 17, my brother and I had to leave Hong Kong to migrate to New Zealand to work and help support our family. Sadly, I was unable to continue my studies. Having said this, the foundations that Heen helped me, helped to establish me, served as life skills that I am forever grateful for. In 1963, when Heen finished his studies in Australia, we were reunited again for four weeks when he came to visit me in New Zealand. You can only imagine my excitement of seeing my friend again after seven long, hard years of working. We traveled to many places across New Zealand in those weeks, and some of the pictures you see above. Heen being the leader, he even took the opportunity to coach me in badminton. After all, he was St. Joseph's representative player. As I write the speech, I look at some of the photos of this trip, and they bring a huge smile to my face. In 1966, after I was married, I had the opportunity to travel to Australia with my new wife, Grace. Again, we spent many a memorable day touring Sydney with Hune. In the 1980s, after I migrated to Australia, Hune and I migrated to the United States. Hune and I reunited in Hong Kong along, another good friend, along with another good friend, Jerry Lamb. Over many dinners and yum cha, we spoke of the old days, uh, our sports achievements, and the trouble we caused. In 1996, Hune attended my oldest son, Simon's wedding. It was our opportunity to be reunited again in Australia on another very happy occasion. Heen visited us again in 2005 when my second son, Greg, married. While there were many often, or often many years which we did not see each other, and we kept in contact via telephone. Last time I saw Heen and Irene was when Grace and I had visited Vancouver. While Heen, Jackie, and Jerry are no longer with us, I live on with treasured memories of our of four St. Joseph boys who moved across the world, established true eternal friendships and memories. We did all right in life. I'm truly grateful for Hune being part of my life. He was intelligent, honorable, generous, and a caring human. All right. 
I got one more talk. This is um, the speech uh, I'm going to give for Irene, his, uh, his loving wife, who has, is an amazing person who has always taken care of my dad. And um, I've got to know her over the last 20 plus years, and she's an amazing lady. And thank you so much for everything you've done for my family, my dad. We can never, ever repay you for what you've done. And, and I look forward to having you part of my life. Um, truly, truly amazing person. My dad was very, very lucky to have her in his life. Sorry. Whew. Told you I was going to try to keep it together the best I can. <laughs> Okay, uh, so this is from Irene. Most people say no one is perfect, but I would say that my husband was perfect. He's always wanted to help people who had problems. He talked with them in different ways constantly and helped him help them along as he can. I remember one thing that one incident when we went to the hospital and dad had a procedure performed, colonoscopy. <laughs> when he was done, the doctor told him to go home and rest. Then he's, he's sitting in the wheelchair and I pushed him in the parking lot. He saw a lady in front of him. She was using her hands to, hard to push a wheelchair by herself. Uh, my dad then decided to get up and to start help pushing her along. The doctor walked by in the hallway to stop him and said, you're not allowed to do that. Um, you're still drowsy, you're still you know, under anesthesia, but this is, this is, her, this is my husband. Um, I am lucky I got him in life. I would say he's a great husband, good father, honest, humble, low profile, which I agree 100%. He likes to keep a low profile, friendly and healthy person. Do you agree with me? Irene and Steve and you. So I would ask anybody else would like to say a few words about my dad, feel free to come on up here. Um, I'm sure he's listening and would love to hear, hear your words. Thank you. He's my brother, and it's very strange that when I was young, I lived in a boarding school, and Brother Hoon, he stays at home. So when I came out from a boarding school a few years afterwards, he was in Australia. So I hardly knew him very well, in the true sense. But when he, after he went to Australia, he studied and he struggled and he became a very successful engineer. And my memory of him is, his, we, we talked about him, he sent photographs when he graduated and we said, oh, my brother in Australia. He's good, he's from Sydney U and he did, he did a good job, you know. And that's all, you know. But somehow, as a monk, I don't get married, but I introduced her first wife, Molly, to him. When I was in the university doing my master's degree. And when my brother saw Molly, he he said, oh, that's wonderful. So he went after Molly all the way. Even when Molly went to uh, Canada and, said, uh, and did research in the university, my brother also went there. You know? he, he, he was working in uh, asbestos, I think. And he drove all the way, a few hundred miles every, set, every Friday, and went to 
to see Molly, you know. And you know what happened? They are here, you know. <laughs> They're wonderful, you know. And I'm really grateful for that because um, I was, uh, and then t I, we went to, um, he asked me to go to uh, um, asbestos and he brought me to a lick and it was to, to have a boat trip and it was very, very cold and I was nearly frozen, you know. And then the motor suddenly went haywire. And I was uh, so worried, you know, because he, he got only a screwdriver and he fixed the boat for 45 minutes, you know, fixed the motor for 45 minutes. I was nearly frozen to death, you know, and I was so afraid. But he kept his calm. And so here I am, you know. <laughs> and after, so after, um, he stayed in Denver, and I also went there with Ivan, and we had a very wonderful time, and I'm so proud of him as a brother, younger brother, you know, and people ask me about him, I said, oh, the engineer, he's good, you know, and that's all I know. You know? And then later on, um, his first wife, Molly, died, and then um, Irene, my brother, I mean, we, uh, we, Irene went with me to uh, Denver to, to pay a visit to him, you know, and then they, they were on very good terms afterwards when Molly died. And then Molly, his first wife, she said, ask your, your uh, told a, 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 uh, one of his friends, to ask, my, uh, to ask Molly, uh, Molly said, tell my brother to go after a certain girl, you know. To, he said, that, these girls are good, you know. But anyway, somehow, after two or three years, Irene and my brother phoned me. She said, we, 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 we are going to on a boat trip. I said, wonderful. And that's how Irene took care of my brother, and they got married, and it followed by, uh, when I stayed in Canada, Irene also took care of me, and the Tara Vihara, uh, the Buddhist Association, Association, and all in all, my brother is a great guy, very kind. He has a heart to serve not only as a profession, not, not only as an engineer, but he wants to be the best. So he worked so hard and he got, I think, uh, a lot of uh, professional qualifications in many countries. And I'm really proud of him. And when I think of him, I say, oh, he's my brother, the engineer. And our family, are we, all, we all are very proud of him. And so I'm lucky to be here today and to share some moments with him. And I always remember him as my brother, the engineer. Thank you. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of my mom, um, Irene, who is uh, Uncle Hoon's uh, sister. And, um, and uh, all this is from my mom when they, all their experiences growing up together in Hong Kong. And uh, my mom said, um, Uncle Hoon is a brother um, who's closest to her. Um, like the other brothers. Uh, my mom grew up as the youngest sister with four elder brothers. So you can imagine all of them, um, you know, really took care of her and uh, she loved all of them equally. Um, 
She said when she was a kid, Uncle Hyun would always bring her out. They would go to the movies, and when I asked her what kind of movie they were watching, her answer was, you know, all kinds. Um, when they went to the cinema, my mom, who was still a child then, would sit on his lap and uh, watch the whole movie together. He's a big fan of uh, the special type of candy from Hong Kong called Yan Zim Gay. And my mom actually brought some of that um, here today. Um, my mom mentioned his favorite flavors were mango and coconut. And uh, the shop's still around. It, they no longer run a store, but back in the day, it was a really, really popular candy in Hong Kong. And uh, they would also go eat coconut ice cream, which you know, they no longer make. Yan Jim Gay, Ye Ji Su Go. My mom uh, recalled when Uncle Hyun had his first salary. Um, he bought a, you know, really, really nice coat for her when he returned from Australia. And um, her life is filled with memories of growing up with him and being kind of the, the youngest daughter and uh, the only daughter. Um, uh, she felt a lot of love from him and as a, you know, and the other brothers. They were a close family, as you can see from the photos. Uh, should like to thank um, Irene. Uh, you know, the other, you know, um, Uncle Hoon's uh, wife, um, Irene, um, for really taking care of Uncle Hoon uh, for all these years. And like Alan, I, I know she's grateful for everything you have done um, for him. My mom also said, she wrote explicitly, and I'm just going to read this part in quotes, um, quote from my mom. I love him a lot and will miss him. I'll always remember the bond we've had, unquote. And, um, you know, that's uh, from my mom, but I'd also say, um, as you can see from the slideshows, I had the pleasure of, of, of being part of the celebration party of Uncle Hoon's 80th birthday. Um, met Ellen's wife there as well, I think, for the first time in Hong Kong. We went to several restaurants. We went to a, a Shanghainese place where I, I think we probably had all our usual, you know, xiao long bao, and uh, maybe the, the soup boiled chicken with wonton, and you know, all these fancy dishes. We also had a chance to eat in, um, in this, you know, room um, that was overlooking the swimming pool in one of the clubs that my mom would go to. And um, my young, my, my elder daughter, who is now 10, I can see just from the you know, slideshows, was there. Um, she was probably you know, one or two back then. Um, you know. um, and one last thing I'll say is, you know, I have the pleasure of really meeting you know, the whole family over the years. I remember meeting you know, Elaine also in Hong Kong when, when she stayed with us. And I also had fond memories of Auntie Molly. Um, she would come from Denver, and she always stayed in this uh, room that was next to my bedroom when I grew up in Hong Kong. And uh, I would always ask you know, Auntie Molly what Denver was like, and she's like, oh yeah, it's really, really high up in the mountains. And she was a really, really fun, free-spirited person um, who had a lot of cheer and energy, and is very, very, you know, um, sprightly and spiky and sort of, you know, full of, um, kind of always had the step on her feet. Um, so that's the kind of memories that I've had with, you know, different members of the Hyun family and um, very, very grateful um, to be part of the, the Ng family, the Ng family uh, from my mom's side growing up. Um, and. Uh, Always, Uncle Hyun um, strike me as a person, like Alan, you mentioned, even healed, calm, um, and uh, 
I'll always miss him and remember him. And um, sending um, you and your family my deepest condolences. And I know my mom will always remember him in her heart. Anybody else would like to say a few words? No? That'd be great. Thank you all. Good morning. Can you hear me? My name is Paul Louis. Uh, I knew Mr. Um, about 20 years ago. I was introduced by the, uh, the wife, Irene Yim. And then when I first saw Mr. Um, I get a very, very, very familiar uh, feeling because, hey, have I seen you before? Oh, later I discovered that he was the brother of my Buddhist great master, Yun Geng. Yeah, I later know that. And then another feeling that, how come we are, I get the feeling we are really close. And later he told me that he was a uh, mechanical engineer, registered and licensed in England. And then about 60 years ago, and I was an electrical engineer, licensed and registered in England about 50 years ago. So that we, are, we belong to the same society, the Institute of uh, Engineering and Technology in London, England. So that, oh, that's why I get a really close the feeling. And then the, I changed my feel about 25 years ago. I'm lazy, I did not advance in the uh, engineering field. But Mr. Ng, he advanced very fast, and then uh, he became a very, very high rank in the society. But, you know, according to the uh, English system in England, if you are a senior, if you are a junior, you have to look up like that to the senior fellow in the engineer society. And, but Mr. Mm, you know, adopt the uh, American system. We are free here, everything equal. He never want me to be junior to him. He, he said that we are equal, we are same engineer. And then uh, Mr. Mm, he looks very serious because he get a billion dollars project to look after. He, he got to see people. He got to go to the court, have the legal fight with another engineering firm. And then that he got to be very serious about those engineering and legal matter. But for ordinary life, he was completely different. He was cheerful, uh, happy, energetic, optimistic, Interesting. And then he said that, uh, I like swimming, I like uh, horse uh, riding, I like the snow skiing, I like the jogging, I like hiking, I like many, many sports. Uh, he has swam across the uh, harbor from Kowloon to Hong Kong and get the, uh, he, he, he read it second or third. I did, he, he mentioned it to me, but he's very energetic. He said that he want to work as senior as possible. He did mention O. Oh. And then he said that uh, if the God allow him, he want to work till 120 years old if allowed that. But he worked part-time uh, as a consulting engineer, nearly 80 years old, doing exercise. 
even for the last uh, time, he still do exercise, walk with uh, Irene Yim, the wife, in QE Park, if the weather allowed. He always mentioned to me, never forsake engineering, because engineering uh, helped the world and uh, change the uh, lifestyle of people, and uh, increase the uh, quality of life of uh, human race. That is why he still, until 2023, he still get the uh, four license in four countries, the US, Canada, uh, Australia, and England. He never, never canceled the registration. He said that he want the younger generation to have somewhere to get their knowledge in the society. Moreover, uh, he want me to follow him to do it. That's why I still keep my the engineering license in England for more than 50 years. And the secondly, he want me to work as senior as possible. Even though I'm 70 years old, I still want to learn him to work till 80 years old, 30 to exercise like him. That's why he's still uh, walking in QG Park in Vancouver. He's by my role model. Thank you, Ms. Um, thank you. One thing I forget to mention, and it's most important in my life, as well as my family, as well in my brother's life. The person I have to say to thank deeply from the bottom of my heart is Irene Yim, his wife. Irene Ng. I must thank Kim, thank her on this occasion, and she is a model of a wonderful Chinese wife. She's brave, courageous, and faces all dangers by herself. And she has taken care of my brother for a long, long time. And that is most valuable. And I thank you, Irene. Thank you. All right, anybody else have any uh, words to say? Not, then uh, I guess I appreciate everybody coming and sharing your experiences with my dad. Um, celebrate his, his life, um, and uh, thank you all again for coming. Appreciate it.
lunch, lunch, the, uh, lunch will be at Santo Camp. at Sun Bo Kong at 1363 Kingsway. So anybody would like to join us, love to have you all there. Sun Bo Kong at Vegetarian Restaurant, 1363 Kingsway. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. One day, the restaurant is in Sun Bo Kong, Sun Bo Kong food. 地址係一三六三 Kingsway， 十二點十二點幾點？十二點十二點半嚇嚇。啊，新普新普光素食一三六三 Kingsway。Okay， one three six three Kingsway， 新普光 Vegetarian Restaurant。Half past twelve。Thank you。多謝各位前嚟參加告別儀式。陣間咧，我哋係誒有個誒專門為用啦。咁咧，但係就係 informal 嘅，係隨意嘅。咁誒，朋友幾時上嚟誒專門為用都可以，又可以留低，又可以離開。咁咧就係陣間十二點半咧喺 Kingsway 一三六三誒寶光素食嗰度。新普江、新寶江素食嗰度係一個解圍宴嘅，請各位如果得閒嚟咧，就可以出席嘅。咁而家咧可以上前嚟接引為用啦，隨意啊，唔需要話係誒 informal 誒、呃，即係 informal， 唔需要話係誒點樣誒、呃、一定接引為用之後一定要走啊，成啊咁樣。接引為用之後都可以坐下嘅，因為至到十二點。咁咧誒解圍宴係至到十二點半嘅，誒十二點半喺嗰度開始嘅。OK， 咁而家可以隨意上嚟，知名為用。
hết chân kia